like a liberated. Hello, welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Pleasure to welcome to the program Michael Ben Eli. He's a PhD and he is a, a guest of great, uh, I'm so happy to have him on the program both personally and he is a friend of the world, a major scholar, a comprehensive thinker. He's in New York briefly now to introduce to a project that he's directly involved with now, the Sustainability Laboratory. He's the, he's the, the uh, director and founder of that organization, which is very important. And parenthetically, without going into a great deal of, uh, of, uh, of it, as we've done in past programs, he was a close associate of the person to whom my thinking is perhaps the most important person in the history of mankind, that being our Buckminster Fuller, in terms of the fuller fulfillment of human purpose in universe, he was a close associate of him. I think he was involved in the science decade, 1965, 75 researchings and so forth. A major scholar and Dave Michael, welcome so very, very much to conversation. So good to see you, looking Thank you. so well. Yeah. Always pleasure to be here. Always <laughs> good to hear. You gave such a great talk. I was a pleasure to be at, you began talking about the larger issues of the universe. Maybe we could talk a little about that. But I know we really want to get down to this very interesting project you had going in the negative. And also you're taking a great deal of attention to that. You told, you're looking so well, and you told me just as we were starting, you've uh, become vegetarian. Yes. That's new. That's six uh, months or so, right? About six months ago. Was yeah. it a health consideration or a moral consideration that took you that way? Well, it's, uh, I, I, like many people these days, I read this uh, fascinating book, The China Study. By I don't know it. I don't know. Campbell. Okay, I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, we can do an advertising for the book here. Yeah, why I mean, not? He, yeah, he, no, he, it's, he, I think it's a very important book. In fact, I've been buying it and sending it to all friend. my friends. Uh, this is a result of 40 years of research yeah. on the connection between nutrition and health. Okay. And what come uh, around the world, with yes. different populations everywhere. Yes. It's called the China Studies because uh, apparently the largest study that they were able to do was in China. Okay. Largest in the sense of number of people and time uh -huh. and uh, different uh, zones and so forth. Yeah. And what their statistics show quite irrefutably, I mean the <laughs> correlations are unbelievable, is mm. that the, 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 the real connection between all the diseases of affluence, all the diseases of modern society, mm -hmm. all the different heart conditions, many of the cancers, right. Alzheimer, all the inflammation stuff, uh -huh. obesity, uh, yeah. Uh, diabetes and so on are directly connected to intake of animals protein. I'll be darned. I and, haven't heard uh, of it. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's majorly distributed around the world. This book. A, a very compelling. And what is uh, it called? Say it again. Let people know. Yeah. The China Study. The China Study. And is there an author connected with the, it? An author. The is author, it? of course, is Campbell. Dr. Campbell, Campbell is, is associated with Cornell. Okay. He's a senior researcher, obviously. He's done, and this is a, a compilation of 40 years of of, uh, of studies around the world. Oh, well, that's it. I, I, I'm going to be going to that right away. You, you should, know. I think. Everybody yeah. else, it's really amazing. It's very compelling in this thing. So I said to myself, like, I like adventures, and yeah. I, I'd give it a try. And for uh -huh. about a month, I started it. And uh -huh. I, we were no time at all, I felt such a huge difference in my level of energy and the way my body feels that I decided to stick with it, and it's been uh, no going back ever since. Okay, I mean, Darren, that's interesting. You think we're genetically suited for that? I always thought we were omnivores or not, you know, but, you know. And I can remember Bucky Fuller one time when he wanted to lose a little weight. He was eating nothing but beef. Actually, he was eating nothing but he beef, absolutely. beef and yeah, tea, yeah, and yeah, he thought yeah, it was yeah, like an Atkins yeah. thing, you know. So there may be still arguments about uh -huh. the issue. I, I, again, I found the evidence that was presented there uh -huh. compelling uh, intellectually. Sure, okay. And it was powerful enough to really kind of make the coin drop for me. And, uh, and that's, But incidentally, yeah. uh, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. it, it was coincidental just about a week or so ago, mm -hmm. I went for a, an annual checkup yes, uh, uh -huh. with my physician, yeah. which I don't do often enough. Right. But the again, the the numbers that came out are so significantly different than uh, 
positive two years on, ago. on cholesterol and, and cholesterol all that kind of stuff. And, and, and all, all the vital things. And you've been doing about six months, you say, yeah? About six or seven months now. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, well, it's so. worth a try. <laughs> it's good. Well, I'll tell you something. You're doing something right. You're looking great. I'm, I'm happy with yeah, it. Yeah, and you're here now and everything. <laughs> I think it's worthwhile talking a little bit because you gave a presentation that I was in tra transfixed with the whole, through the whole thing. It could have gone on for five hours because it was so <laughs> damned interesting. It really was. But you began talking about the... Uh, the, the scope of the universe and the big picture and where do we fit in and I understand you've uh, given thought and you studied as a younger man the evolution itself within a uh, cyber with the cybernetic connection these are always very these are very all current things but maybe you could we could talk a little bit about that and and Bucky a little bit and then we want to get down to a good deal of our talk being about this sustainable project you're, you're involved in but very good. what do you think you, you started off your talk talking about the big issue I you had a picture of the universe, and I don't know if you'd reference the Wilkinson universe. Anyway, you're involved with the big picture. Well, the, the, this is, of course, something that Bucky used to always yeah. say, and it starts with the bigger picture. So yeah. when you look at the context, uh, and the context is very nicely provided these days mm -hmm. by those magnificent uh, photographs, yeah, pictures that are coming from the Hubble telescope. You, ha you showed those, and also the Wilkinson, uh, the W map. Yeah. They got, we got a picture of the Big Bang shockwave only 300,000 years after its existence, 13.7 billion years ago. Staggering. And there's Lisa, or Liza, it's a, sat, a, a race connected with CERN, I think, and they were going to get a picture of it. I don't think they got final financing, but it's in place. They'll get a picture of the shockwave of the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago within a nanosecond of its occurrence. Yeah. And, uh, of course, what we're looking at when we look at those distances, we're looking at the past. Yeah, yeah. And one of the photographs that we looked at there was actually a snapshot of the cosmos about 400 years, 400 million years after the Big Bang itself. Right, 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 right. Uh, uh -huh. But the point is that when you look at those gigantic, uh, amazing constellation, mm -hmm. amazing thing, you see all these areas in the universe, we have those gigantic stardusts, uh, yeah. uh, 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 dusts of, uh, uh, that are shaped by ultraviolet lights and so right. gas clouds and so on. Yeah. Uh, and you realize that these are regions that, uh, where stars are constantly being yes. formed. These are <laughs> major factories, these yeah. are laboratories, right. if you like, where, where gigantic things are being formed all the time. So yeah. we get a picture here of a hugely dynamic yeah. affair that is never at rest, that right. things always transform and intertransform right. and, and so on. So it's like a, a, a gigantic kaleidoscope. You look yeah. at the clouds right. and you see all right. the things <laughs> right. falling into each That's other, a good becoming metaphor, yeah. one thing becoming into another and so on. And so there is a sense when you think about it that w what you're looking at is uh, two different kind of processes. Okay. There are processes of diffusion, yeah. uh, increasing entropy everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second uh, law of thermodynamics. Like the sun, our sun that burns yeah. itself out. Yeah, yeah. And of course there are regions in the cosmos where things are being consolidated. Yeah. And order is increasingly increased. Isn't that what Bucky uh, said he thought the biological process was, co was possibly a synergetic or syntropic or anti-entropic function exactly that moves that. across entropy exactly and that. brings increased conscious pattern of understanding of the uh, of the universe in which we, we we exist and the fact that we're able to take a picture of the shock wave 13.7 billion years ago is a pretty interesting ability given our long sweep of history well, we, we'll to take this. the measure of things we'll you talk know? The, the, in a minute about yeah. this but what is happening here if, if you look at this notion of areas of consolidation of energies yeah clearly the earth in our familiar uh, neighborhood, so yeah, to speak, is yeah. one of the most outstanding examples. If maybe the only. I don't know. SETI notwithstanding. Maybe only, maybe not, but uh, whether it is or it's not, it is a case where energies are being compounded. Yeah. And an increase in order manifests itself through the formation of, uh, of organic and molecule, it, yeah. all kinds of forms of life, life right. itself, ecosystems, everything right. that we're familiar with. Yeah, no. Complexification in the sense of uh, right. Tilao de Sargent is what yeah, we're Yeah, Chardin here. was wonderful. Yeah, completely so. Yeah. Yeah. You never had any truck with him or anything. You wouldn't have known him. Oh, no, 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 no. I was, he was too young. Oh, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a lot but of trouble with the, the Catholic he, Church. His work influenced me a great deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and me, stuff, and yeah. me too. He had the Omega, 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 were, and, and were, what did he say, were, were compressing, no, what was the term he used? We were, he was a major force, yeah, he was a jet, so he, to, was, 
Yeah, go ahead. To, yeah. to come back to it, uh, yeah. I want to make the differentiation between uh, diffusion and entropy yeah. and increasing order and complexification. Mm -hmm. And uh, so w w when you look at that picture here, you see basically that reality is in a constant process of reordering itself. Okay. Ordering and reordering itself. The evolutionary itself. process is expressing? Is it's expressing expressed. itself through yeah. all these uh, dynamics. Right. right. Uh, and it's clear that the human activities, human potentials, human activities are part of this gigantic self-organizing system. Okay. We are basically right. agents uh -huh. of a particular part uh -huh. of these transformations yeah, and, then we're and coming, evolution. And we're coming to understand that. Uh, I don't know, Robert Goldberg here in New York and everything, they're finally getting down to where, how in the world, what is it, 4.5 billion years for our Earth apparently coalescing, and 3.8, somewhere around 3.8 billion years when the first beginnings of the constituencies of what was to become ribonucleic acid began to where they be, get to be the beginning of the organic evolutionary process itself is beginning to be clearer and clearly understood. And every day, Michael, there come six or seven revolutions over the transom from every field. It's like a quickening. This is an acceleration. Term, of yeah, the, against uh, uh, the slow grind of uh, collecting knowledge and so forth and myth and all the rest that we come out of history. And I think that all the new evidence that we are getting, including this uh, thing about nutrition, for example, yeah. when I was young, this information was not available, uh, is really making for the transformation that will lead for the next step in the evolution of humanity itself. You asked before about I did ask you. It's it. something I'm very interested in because you have studied evolution. Uh, you've studied uh, Stephen Jay Gould and Eldridge and punctuated equilibrium and how the new appears. And we have a pretty good understanding. They had a great documentary on NOVA and television last night I happened to watch. You know, we seem to be coming from after Australopithecine four, five, seven million years ago to Homo habilis. And we seem to be a descendant or uh, growing out of the process of Hobo habilis. And we apparently have appeared on the scene in this universe, a Homo sapien species, about 200,000 years ago. Does that resonate as close to the truth to you? Or have that, you had any yeah, reason that, to? That seems to be the conventional. That seems to be, uh, so that's about yeah. 10,000 generations, isn't it? That's to be about 10,000 generations of our species. And one of the questions, and you said you studied evolution. And you also studied it in terms of with cybernetic understanding, because you'd done a PhD in cybernetics, evolution. The process by which the new appears, or incorporates the old, or the old is subsumed by the new, and I think we said just earlier, 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever existed in our evolutionary process has gone extinct, as there's greater complexity all the time. Uh, how does the new appear? How does the new system weight relate with systems that had been previously uh, subsuming? What's the relationship between the advance of that through punctuated equilibrium? Well, and how does it relate? How do we relate? If our earliest ancestor as a species is Homo habilis, how, what are the ramifications, the time factor? How does punctuated equilibrium occur? Because I suggest to you, we very well may be coming to the end of the Homo sapien experience. Well, let's go to the first question. In this time frame. Let, let's go to the first question. How do things happen there? And, uh, yeah. Uh, with, the, with the possibility of erring in simplification, uh. I think that what is character, what a, a good characterization of the process is uh, a process in which increasingly larger integrations occur. Okay. So you look again at the dynamics that we talked about earlier, that transformation, all those entities. Yeah. Uh, what you have here is tremendous amount of uh, semi-autonomous stable entities that interact. Whether steady they are, state or uh, steady, steady state? state. No, steady, this, okay. this entity that interacts okay, in a dynamic yeah, okay, 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 okay. And those things have, in, in order to have evolution, yeah. you have to have identities, you have to have specific things, okay. and they interact and yeah. form all kinds of relationships mm -hmm. and so forth. And mm -hmm. certain identities mm -hmm. emerge mm -hmm. and, and are stable enough to survive. In oh, other words, they are uh, selected yeah. for some advantage. Right. Now, the context of their existence uh, may change because mm -hmm. of those dynamic <laughs> things, the kaleidoscope that we're talking about, yeah. and there has to be a response. Mm -hmm. The response is either you don't adapt and you disappear, mm -hmm. or you are able to create a new configuration mm -hmm. that is now selected for some uh, survival advantage. Yeah. Survival not in a, in a simple uh, sense, but yeah. now it's better. So, 
Uh, now it's the, better. The, 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 now it's better in, uh, under some criteria. We, we, we might be able to translate that in geopolitical terms, how societal entities uh, of different power relationships. Maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be a little that. careful yeah. with that. Yeah, I know. But it's the dangerous. point is yeah. that when you look at it, it, it take, for example, a, a cell, a typical a biological cell. Yeah. Uh, we know now that most of its key ingredients, like mm. the, the mitochondria yeah. and the nucleus and so forth, right. used to be independent entities uh -huh. before uh -huh. for, um, uh, cells formed. Right. And there was some advantage of them in coalescing, so there is a fantastic role to yeah. uh, uh, cooperation Right. And collaboration right. and coalition formation. And then can in that evolution. put it, can that put us into a, you said forget steady state, but could that put us into a situation vis a vis a particular thing? I'm not real sure, but I think six hundred and fifty million years ago fauna, if not life, they had it, they had evolved, they had evolved ribonucleic, they got it, and it was sing a unicellular spongiform. And that that would be for a long time. There would be this. It would be a successful that long period times where this thing is successfully able to continue and expand its own use would be a, an example of what would be called a steady state. Yes, but this is okay. a fa fascinating thing because you, you have a process by which the formation of any identities mm -hmm. requires a steady state, right? Oh. For, oh, oh, okay, yeah. That's okay. why that's yeah, why it's right. it's identifiable because right, it's steady, right. yeah. it's stable over that's some time. That's right. Over a long period of time. But if it's often. only steady state, uh -huh. it will not change. Right. It will just continue in the same, in the same steady state fashion for a long time. For a long time. Yeah. Right. Now it, it requires that the steady state mm -hmm. condition, which mm -hmm. is basically a circle or. Uh, a has How a about a geodesic? Structure. We, uh, we're, we can get to tensegrity, maybe in a way where we could see a geodesic form. There's a there's a form that's like geodesic that is the whole, is steady state. This is cool. The steady state creatures could say, "This is cool. Let's put up some curtains and make it nice within the state." And then there's a thing that goes through it. Tensional integrity, intentional integrity, and compression are part of a tensegral view of things of reality. Is it not that Mr. Fuller? Brought forth, or what? Could you inform me in that? Uh, I, I was not going to go in the direction of geodesic domes. No, not domes. This, uh, I was just thinking of the uh, concept of tensegrity, tensegrity at a molecular level. Even. Tensegrity structure are very interesting structure in yeah. the sense that they are very resilient and very flexible mm -hmm. uh, because they're not uh, the, 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 the fundamental components in a geodesic dome are not uh, uh, tied together solidly. Uh, right. Because right. the compression members are connected by tensile forces. Uh, right. They have tremendous amount of give and take, and they're very interesting structures. But the example I was thinking, steady state. So here's this thing, and it's going, and then there's this thing. This would be like a male function or something, or something where you're, you say, is moving through the whole and wants to inform the whole new. And when that new form is, is reached tensegrally or something in terms of an evolutionary context, that's when the new appears. If it's related to evolutionary transformation, punctuated equilibrium, their brand, all the variety. I, I personally, again, maybe I, I'm I going overboard, uh, or I'm not right. You're not I'm going overboard, right. but personally, my, I, I would not use that as an example for okay. evolution. Uh -huh. uh, but certainly, there is uh, an aspects of which it could be a very nice metaphor. Metaphor. That's for what example, I think I was reaching uh, for. Yeah. You've got some possibilities of starting with a with a tetrahedron yeah. and evolving into into an octahedron octahedron and an icosahedron and, mm. so, and, and yeah. so forth. So there yeah. is an evolution, yeah. a structural evolution from uh -huh. a simple form to a more elaborate form. Right. But I think that what yeah. we see in evolution in, in, uh, in organic life yeah. and in social life yeah. and in evolution of ideas and so yeah. is so far more richer than that particular situation that uh -huh. is basically still a, a prisoner of its own geometry. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. 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 What yeah. was happening in those coalition formation that we talked about uh -huh. is that entities that did not were not integrated as one uh -huh. such new yeah. entity before yeah. are now coming together for some advantage. They uh -huh. form a new entity that has more powerful, more effective in some uh, under some particular uh, circumstance. And this process has some logic to it, and you can see how. Uh, the you, you have a formation of increasingly more complex entities, yeah. biological entities. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's within the biological realm itself, there's mm -hmm. always 
an increasing ways of, of, of increasing the internal variety uh -huh. of such system. For example, amplifying its variety, which makes it more versatile. Yeah, for example, complexity, by, uh, in, in, increased in complexity. complexity yeah, by yeah. Introducing uh, uh, sexual reproduction, for example. Yeah, right, right. That now right. allows for uh, mixing of genes and right, so forth. Right. It's not just the same gene right. that is being spliced. Right. Uh, you have the formation of societies where individuals can cooperate with their own societies or human societies or whatever. We, we, we uh, could try to make the... the, the yeah. They create more and more uh, complex organizations. I think it would be interesting trying to connect these, uh, these examples of societal organization with biological processes and nature. It would be interesting to study that as one It's the thing. same process. Yeah. It's well, the same process. Okay. That, uh, we, it's we, important to your work, I know, it, and it's, it's important to us understanding it. It's yeah. completely the same process in the, same, in the sense that... Uh, from a systems point of view, yes, from uh -huh. a cybernetic point of view, right. there's the same logic that mm. is exhibited throughout the levels of emergence. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, in our culture mm. and uh, our academic uh, life and so forth, we tend to fragment things into particular identities. So you are, you are, you are, yeah. you're a sociologist, oh, but yeah. then you're not a biologist. Oh, it's so a, you yeah. think <laughs> that biology and society are different things, but basically, they are all manifestations of the same cosmic... It's all one interconnected it, it, system. Precisely so. So that's systems thinking. Bucky used to warn against And it's also, I think since the computer linear regression, academia has gone... So, and world society has gone so specialized. It's gone really specialized. And there are very few people anymore who are thinking systemically or systematically or comprehensively about uh, uh, in, a, in a systems way that take in the big pictures such as you do. And this is Does very important. Does it seem that way to you? That everything's become so specialized they can't think about the whole? L look at departments and universities. Yeah. They're becoming increasingly fragmented. Uh, and specialized. Yeah, absolutely. It's a yeah. divide and conquer of the intellectual not, community. Not just, not just academia, but the whole professional uh, life. Right. You're, uh, you're no uh, longer just a doctor. You're a doctor of the right finger on your, you know, that kind of thing. And that's where the money is. Which is why you can treat the heart but not see the yeah, nutritional right. connection. Yeah, and also the FBI won't talk to the CIA and all this kind of uh, tunnel vision go all over the place. I, I, would, I would say it even stumbling. in a more dramatic way. I think that uh. most of the, uh, the, the immense world problems that we are faced today from climate change to whatever, to the inter disintegration of the financial system, yeah. all of those issues are a result of, of tunnel of vision. A failure of tunnel vision, of yeah. a failure to look comprehensively, to understand things systemically. Mm -hmm. We treat systems as mm -hmm. though they were clockworks. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have yeah. a very mechanistic, linear way of looking at things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And those things are not linear. They're not mm -hmm. mechanistic. Right. They are, they are uh, organic. They are, uh, they yeah. are interactive. They right. are mutually dependent. They right. are everything but... Yeah. A linear kind of process. Yeah, right. It's interesting, uh, too. I so. use the example, I don't know, I think I'm off base, but I understand there's something in a or, human organism. I use it a lot. Human organism, something like 100 trillion cells, including in the gut and bacteria. And I know we all walk around in the sea of bacteria. 100 trillion. Every cell matters. Every cell is connected and communicating with every other cell in a systems way. It makes the Internet look simple. Not only that. Not One only, human being, right? Am only, I correct or not? Yeah, I, completely. Yeah. Not only that all those cells yeah. are connected and yeah. are aware of each other yes, constantly, right. but yeah. they're also connected and aware to everything that is outside. <laughs> yes, <them>. right. <laughs> right. And they're right. connected all the way to mm -hmm. this 13.7 billion years. Yeah, you see? right. Yeah. That, now, that, uh, it wasn't the case when it was... Uh, Lucy or well, also it may have not been it may have not see, been a, you know a, I mean? a, a aware connection but people were always aware of the night star and the sun and the whole universe around well, what them. about before there were about what about, I don't know I where how do we do this you you studied this like I guess we're about right I watched that mr. leaky and all that yesterday and I guess it's correct it was four to seven million years ago they what was to be it was latent we were latent in uh, Australopithecine. Well, we know, didn't exist. We were latent yeah, but in that process. That's that's the fascinating thing about the cosmos altogether, that uh -huh. everything was latent in, yeah. in the tiny, compressed things of, of matter yeah. that preceded the Big Bang. Right. Everything was latent in it. The yeah, potentiality that's true. That's, right the, big, already, that's yeah. the big one, isn't it? Yeah, that is, yeah. No, but it, it is that. So, so we weren't there. So, and then how... And we can say it, most species have gone extinct, and yet there's a greater variety. And how did we get from, what is the process by which evolutionary, you can think politically about uh, Rome 
uh, falling and then hereditary states taking over as politically legitimate in the minds of the world society as a metaphor or something. But how is the power or the relationship of uh, an advanced, we use another system, let's call it homo sapien, as opposed to homo habilis. Uh, apparently this is from which we emerge uh, from the evidence. What is that process? And, and then you could try to relate it to political things in terms of an advanced civilization, not as advanced. We might get down to your sustainable thing in the, in the negative in that sense and everything. But do you understand what I'm saying? And uh, what happens to homo of that which is subsumed? Uh, United States of America set up a system to challenge the hereditary idea of the divine right of kings to rule and set up hereditary patterns for a thousand years after Rome. They made a change. It was a change, it was an advance. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How do we deal with those evolutionarily, those changes and advancements, and also in political or sociological or human terms? Well, and it, is it, it dangerous to try and draw analogies between the biological or the natural order and the political process of human nature? I think analogies nature? are very useful, as long as you don't uh, make them into dogmas <laughs> or something right. like that. But it's I, it's I, like a, a probe. Mr. Mr. So McClellan used are, to talk are, about are, probes. You know? Analogies are, are very useful in understanding processes and understanding principles that yeah. may be transferable. Across and testable, and te maybe. Uh, forget okay. testable for a minute. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I assume that. Yeah, okay. But transferable a, a, yeah. a, across different uh, manifestations of reality. So okay. you're asking about Homo sapiens. I mean, yeah. obviously, many uh, 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 deep thinkers like Fuller and others yeah. have yeah. been talking about the fact that humanity seems to be perched on the threshold of something new, yeah. that it has to evolve somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, one way to interpret a mm -hmm. great deal of the uh, issues that we have that uh, we call today sustainability, mm -hmm. all the major negative uh, uh, adverse impacts, uh, things like climate change and so forth, yeah. the biodiversity loss, uh, all, all the familiar issues. Yeah. You can interpret them as, as, a, as a conflict between the attempt of something to emerge the next uh -huh. step in evolution, if you will. And the reifying of and what has been. The, exactly, and all yeah. the yeah. has been yeah, right. that keeps it together. And yeah. the has been, yeah. what is the has been? Yeah, the has yeah. been is the basic values that we hold, yeah. the, the, the picture of the of reality. The basic values that we have held. That we have held and, and, and still hold. I mean, you And know, it's very uh, important uh, to a lot of people and institutional but it's structures not just, and yeah, architecture it's, and everything exactly. else. So it's yeah. not just values, it's right. the value, it's the whole, uh, a view of the world, yeah, right. uh, it's the institution the world, that we have, the governance, the, the way we make decisions, exactly, yeah. uh, what we hold uh, right. as dear, what are the priorities right. and allocation of resources, anything right. that, all of those kind of things. Right, so you are. we've got tremendous amount of mechanisms uh -huh. of institutions, of mm -hmm. machinery, mm -hmm. that was well adapted to a steady state, yeah, you talked right. about before, that, that, was, that was okay 10,000 years ago. Yeah, but then there's a change. But then and they now call there it is punctuated a change. Equilibrium and the, in, and the real, and, mm -hmm. And the real challenge mm -hmm. is to make that transition, to be aware of mm -hmm. what is happening, mm -hmm. understand what needs to be done, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. and be part of that transition mm -hmm. of navigating rather yeah. than let it happen. And this is where, again, Bucky and many others said, this is touch and go. Yeah. There's no it will guarantee. be. He said touch and go right up to the final yeah. moment. Yeah. We're so, still approaching the final moment, yes. are we not? Well, yeah. not the, the final exam. Final, well, he said moment, I think. Final, I think final oh, exam. Okay. And what, what it means is that, and that's a very interesting aspect of evolution, that mm. there's n never a guarantee. Right. Uh, the whole thing is like walking, Synergetic. On a, uh, uh, walking on a razor blade. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. You know? Yeah. So the point of equilibrium that has to be maintained at each moment is mm. very, uh, think about this, mm. just the range of temperatures that life can tolerate. Well, right. what is you, it, 212 to 35, 33 Whichever, degrees? it's very narrow. Yeah, and uh, it stayed that way for so long. The chemical composition yeah. of an atmosphere. Unbelievable. Everything yeah. is a tiny little speck. So yeah. uh, it's it, it very important to keep within those, uh, within those degrees of freedom, so to speak. So uh -huh. a, a very interesting paradox, if you will, or, or aspect of evolution is mm -hmm. that you can only say we were successful in retrospect. You can look back and That's say, right. here was a moment of transition, and we made it. Uh, and the big question today, I think, if humanity will make it, because yeah. we are producing so many problems that are life-negating, that mm -hmm. can destroy life itself, all well, other species and, and, and human as well. And, and That's the, really interesting. I wanted to follow up on Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, the question is whether we will be able, in time, yeah. to make the required transition. 
And this transition is not a question of tinkering here and there with aspects of that system. Let, yeah. Let's look at civilization as a system. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's yeah. not just changing here a little bit, a little low here. <coughs> we'll change this. Yeah, we'll get the car yeah. from a from a fossil fuel driven to a hybrid. This is yeah. nonsense. The whole thing has to be transformed. That's quantitative change. And it's quantitative and change. Qualitative. It's what some people uh, talk, uh, call it uh, second order change, yeah, uh -huh. where the change has to occur not mm. only in fundamental components of the system right. without changing the system itself, uh -huh. but the system is a whole decision rule. Well, that uh, question of be, uh, how much, we, we were saying we're reifying outdated, in, they become outdated in time. And, but the institutions are very important to people's identities, they anchor. We do have to anchor, it's talking politically now, we do have to anchor to history. We cannot just make a leap. Well, you see, this is, this is of course, the biggest, the, 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 the most, uh, how should I say, the, the, the most... The most politically no, difficult. No, 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 no. The, the most uh, powerful aspect of all of this. Mm. Remember, we talked about stable identities, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. A stable identity has to resist change. Otherwise, it won't be stable. That's correct. So there is, in, in all processes, in all entities, whether biological or social or whatever, mm -hmm. or, or physical, mm -hmm. there is an inertia that is built in that is important to maintain that identity. Right. And the trick is to be able to catch the moment mm -hmm. where that identity or its definition is no longer relevant, where you have to change it. Now, why is it so difficult in the social political realm because most of the elements that makes for social or political identity uh -huh. are tied to vested interests. Right. And In those the old order. Interests yeah, yeah. the old order. But every order that exists, yeah. somebody benefits from. That's right. And that somebody or, or some bodies or some institutions or some something, mm -hmm. whether it's a party or, or a political party or whatever, yeah. uh, because it benefits for some, uh, or a corporation. Or people, because, or, and these are institutions by which people oh, get their course. identity, course, their of sense of, of identity. Of you mess with so, people's of sense of, of identity, so you're in deep doo So it's not a question doo -doo. of uh, bad yeah. people here. Yeah, yeah, right, this is right, who right. you are, so you, yeah. you're going to continue to protect it. Mm -hmm. So within that system, there is a tension between mm -hmm. the need to change mm -hmm. and the requirement to conserve. Exactly. And, yeah. and again, the question is always whether the conservative elements, uh, sometimes the conservative element is very important. Let's yeah. look at an example. If you take the Egyptian civilization, for example, yeah. uh, or any aboriginal, th this is a complete uh, different, an aboriginal group that is well adapted to its environment. Yeah. In both cases, you have a very stable, long period of time. Right, right. And it took that system a long time to learn from its experience, uh -huh. what works and what doesn't work. Yes. So there is a huge premium that has to be put on not changing what we know works. Uh -huh. So there are all these right. taboos against system uh, thinking differently. And uh -huh. any, anybody who does think differently is looked at as a social deviant and has to be exterminated right. or, or the, only, the, way. Ca the Catholic Because the system has uh -huh. to protect itself. Right, and it's important. And people have their identities again. And they only, the Catholic Church only let Galileo off the hook about 12 years ago for so, saying we weren't the center of the universe. So and the, they're imbued in a sense of creationism that has been part of answering the self-reflective consciousness of what it's all about issues that are very, very important to the various cultures. Yes, but let's, yeah. keep, let's keep with that uh, trajectory there. So okay. you've got the, the conservative element is absolutely essential, but mm. now comes a moment where that stable context, yes. where the conservative knowledge exists mm -hmm. and, and works well, mm -hmm. is no relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. And now, if yeah. you are not able to free yourself from yeah. it and be mm. creative mm -hmm. and invent something new, yeah. you're, you're going to have some big problems. And yeah. I said, that's what's happening as a, to tie to what I was saying before. This is exactly what we're seeing today, uh -huh. that we are producing gigantic uh, uh, existent threatening problems mm -hmm. because we are continuing driven by vested interests that are were very well entrenched mm -hmm. on a path that leads straight into the wall. Uh, uh, for so example, we're straight into the wall. Yeah, you? like a train running yeah. into a wall. Yeah. yeah, and you brought up before, you said uh, you were talking about the fact that uh, you could uh, threaten life or something. Uh, one of the one of the unique characteristics, it seems to me, I may be wrong, but you know, is of the, of the Homo sapien species, is it's a unique capability to extend its consciousness into the environment through tools and technology and make the world other than, in the Eden-like sense, is the way most of the creatures confront it. 
and you know ants make whole uh, nests and birds make nests and things but we really can and we're, one of the leading edges of all that since civilization has been political classes that want to get a political military advantage over the other tribe and that's the call that's led that and those weapon systems have gotten worse it comes theory of relativity special general teller we get weapon systems that apparently have come to the point where if they were to be unleashed as they have been in a conquest attempt to become the winner be above the law set your own pattern and that kind of thing conquer the other lesser peoples or lesser tribes or civilizations or something that they become species lethal i don't think we've got to the point yet where we can destroy life but apparently we can for the first time and it's within our lifetime we can destroy the homo sapiens species with the extended ability of human consciousness in its weapon systems that have let all the... That, is, do you I, think that's true? I, I think that, the, well, obviously, it just you, all you have to do is to count the, the number of nuclear uh, weapons that exist on the planet and how many they can explode the whole thing uh, <laughs> over. Uh, but the interesting thing, of course, is that we've gone way beyond the threat of nuclear capability only well, to destroy life. Well, there's germ warfare and... No, 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 forget, forget the weaponry. Oh, this, okay. is only, this is only one part of the story. This okay. is the, the, the human stupidity to keep... This is the negative side, yeah. Uh, ...investing in all its resources and all its best technology and best science in producing better and better and more lethal uh, combinations. But what has been happening recently and what we are suddenly beginning to understand uh, uh, the, the, the focus on weapon, on weapon of mass destruction was really belongs to the 60s, to the Cold War. What we are understanding now that it's not just the weapons, it's the way we live, the consumption of fossil fuels uh, that completely change the composition of the atmosphere and create climate change, which is, can create disasters bigger than and, 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 the, the, the way we decimate other species. The loss of biodiversity is well, 10 times, not 10, is, is a million fold more dangerous than any, any nuclear weapon that we've ever devised. That's Why? very interesting. Why? Because to the existence of the Homo sapiens to, to the existence of everything. Why? To the existence of life itself. Okay. Why? Because we now understand that the very stability of complex dynamic system yeah. depends on their internal variety. And you mm. have a biosphere here yeah, yeah. that is extremely complex ecology yeah, with all yeah. these myriad, myriads of species yeah. from microbes to elephants all I know. interacting. I know. We now see, for example, that the, the loss of, uh, of uh, elephants and rhinoceri in, yeah. in Africa is having a lot of uh, 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 impact on the fauna because yeah. with their moving around, yeah. Uh, and, and their waste product, they, 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 are, they, are, oh. they are distributing the seeds yeah, 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 and, and yeah, so on. Yeah. So what is happening here, what we understand is that the, 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 the stability of complex systems depend on their internal uh, variety. And what yeah. we are doing is we are reducing the complexity of the biosphere by eliminating a species after species, species after species. When you have a yeah. report from the UN yeah. that says that in 30 years from now, if mm. we go on fishing the way we do now, mm. oh, the empty oceans. Be empty oceans. Now, can oh, you horrible. imagine what we'll do? The empty yeah. ocean is not just there'll be no fish mm -hmm. that has an impact on a whole yeah. food plankton, chain. Plankton, the whole plankton, thing, yeah, plankton, yeah. Plankton, corals, everything no. else. And it's all interrelated system. Like we said, uh, 100 trillion cells in human, there's liver cells, there's all kinds so of stuff. So even if yeah. you have a complete complete uh, a, 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 a removal of all the uh, weapon uh, potential lethal aspects of weaponry, uh, we are still behaving in ways that are short-sighted and lethal in itself. I, I don't, you think that they are species lethal? The, uh, uh, the, the implications of... Of course uh, they are. Well, if I may, yeah. it seems to me it will create... Um, yeah, I mean, global warming and that sort of thing would create, um, or then you've got uh, volcanoes and things like that. There, there's a possible of a, uh, asteroid or something, but the, that that would create conditions that would be very, very taxing and very, very upsetting to the order. Now, wait a minute. I'm just suggesting I get informed uh, and everything. But, uh, and it would be a gr very destabilizing. There might be gr massive uh, people, number of people that can't survive. There'd be great chaos. And, uh, and that, in terms, that condition would lead to the unleashing of the weapons. But it's only the weapons that would eliminate, in one fell swoop, the Homo sapiens species. 
It, it, it may not I be. mean, there would be survivors in New Guinea. There would be some people who would survive here and there. You wouldn't wipe out the entire species except by the weapons, it seems to me. I, 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 it I'm would be arguing, very inconvenient. I'm not arguing the fact that, that weapons are dangerous and that they have the potential of wiping up a great deal of humanity and other things as well. Okay. It's not just humanity. You know? I don't think those other ecological things would have the ability on their own of wiping out the species. Well, for, they would wait, create wait, political wait, wait. No, no, conditions. No, I want to take you somewhere else. Okay, good. And that is the fact that in addition to the weapon uh, capability mm -hmm. of being dangerous, and we should leave the weapons alone. They're not very interesting things. Uh, what is happening now, and you're talking about asteroids and so forth, all those are external events yeah. that impact the system or... Yeah. or, or of which we don't have much control. I mean, the sun is going to expand one day and the whole well, thing will burn different. out. Well, that's different. So that's true. Yeah, uh, that's, that's not the re yeah, What that, is important yeah. here is that human activity in itself yes. is today producing impacts of a magnitude that is threatening continuous existence on the planet. That, that's the significant thing. Okay, that's very interesting. That's called sustainability. Yeah, that and that is. might get us around to the project <laughs> you're involved in. This is all very interesting stuff and everything like that. And we've been talking on these large scenes. I thank you for your, uh, you know, for your, for your, yeah, for your, my, I'm learning from that. And I appreciate that. We've got to be in touch and everything. But now tell us, uh, you've been talking about these things. You've been interested in it. You were in touch with Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller did that design science thing from 65 to 70, and he did a little graph where he thought we were gaining in the percentage of the world population that through ephemeralization, doing more with less through good design, the percentage of the world population that could be seen in a context of capability was increasing to where it was going to cross the 50% mark along about 1970. That's when the weapons became species lethal, not the first world war. We were protected in the second world war. Trying to get a time frame for this thing, we did a program with Isaac Asimov. He said, this is the defining generation, 1970, 2070. This is the defining after 10,000. Trying to get a thing that makes this period of time qualitatively different, and that projection of a 50% crossover point was 1970. We could see, in a certain sense, we were transcending, and that was a trend that you could see. It was coming out of history. Material scarcity, perhaps, as a, I mean, but we were transcending it. We were coming to a time of abundance, or a capability of providing abundance through good design to the whole population of the world and the ecology as uh, just that is equally significant on the living side as the destructive capability of the weapons. What do you make of that? Well, I mean, that's obviously the hopeful trend, but uh, I think what, we've, what we are seeing uh, at the moment is that the, the promise is there the, the, the capability. The capability. We were talking about latent energy or the, something. The you know. capability and the promise continues yeah. to be there. But as I start, uh, tried to argue uh, earlier, there's a great deal of forces that are standing in the way. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the forces. It's are... very important to make it be realized. You see, we, we are facing a challenge that is unprecedented in, in the whole history of humanity, and that right. is how to manage the world resources right. with 9 billion people. There, there's, Nine heading for 10, I think. Uh, yeah, it's going to level off. That's the UN. Again, says, it I doesn't think. matter, as yeah. I was trying to argue in the yeah. thing, whether it's 9.5 or 10. The <laughs> yeah. point is that the difference is between less than a billion yeah, to right. 9 billion. Yeah, that's right. Already, it's been less than a billion that, forever. That's suddenly yeah. a, a yeah. huge, yeah. A huge. Right, so exactly. No yeah. one knows. Yeah. There's no one, no expert, no, mm -hmm. no government, no president, yeah. no one, no heads of bank, no mm -hmm. one understands how to manage 9 billion people with the resources of the planet. Well, and certainly all the processes that we have now in place that drive the economy and so forth mm -hmm. indicate to us that if we, and, and quite a few researchers have been talking about this, that if we go at the rate of consumption of resources in order to satisfy the, 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 the better lifestyle for everybody, uh -huh. and if we do it with the current way of doing things, we'll uh -huh. need four planets. There was some hope. So, yeah, so yeah. The, 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 the real question, the real challenge is a design challenge. That's yes, where it, that exactly, exactly. Is how to use the world resources. That's where uh, Buck is doing more with less is so important. How That's a very use, important principle should be understood. How to use the world resources through good design. Through good design yeah. in much better ways. I mean, today yeah. we know 
that our current, the current world economy, based on fossil fuels, yeah. is extremely inefficient. Right. It's very wasteful. It's, right. very, uh, it's actually very entropic. Right. It's the other. It's mm. precisely the the opposite of good design. Right. In right. case of good design, from what we started earlier, right? Yes, it's human right. intelligence right. Right. being able to contribute to the right. consolidations of right. things, to the increase right. of order, uh -huh. uh, and, and and so on. So that's the function, perhaps. Of humans in universe, right? Yeah, yeah. To become the anti-entropic. Uh, uh, well, he, yeah, he, I think but, he said uh, the, the uh, whole uh, biological process was an anti-entropic yeah. function in the universe that moves across the entropy. So there is a channel shield about yeah. how to apply this intelligence to good mm. design in order to reverse those uh, uh, adversely impacting processes. Yeah. Uh, and at the moment, it's clear that the mainstream of the economy. The mainstream of the uh, financial class. system, the banking system, yeah. the mainstream of the political thing is still not in line. They're just reifying the outdated order, are exactly. they not? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's st it, it's mm. still not in line with what has to happen. On the other hand, yeah. I can tell you from my own experience yeah. that in the last 10, 15 years, yes. the difference uh -huh. in understanding, especially among young people and yeah. young professionals, uh -huh. there's, an there's an explosion of uh, awareness and people leaving the old way of doing things oh. and experimenting with new ways. I was trying to compare that to like, I don't know, I never birthed a baby like a lady, but it's like a quickening in a, in a, a when you're coming to something new, really new and qualitatively different, right, instead of quantitatively different. Uh, someone, and it seems to me if there could be grass in the present consciousness, and he wanted to put together, among other things, you had a hand in it with that design decade thing, he wanted to put together like an operating manual for a spaceship Earth, where you could get at a big systems understanding, you take the thing out of the box, this is how much is there, we would have an understanding of that, and that understanding could include an understanding of the potential that we actually have trans. there is enough through good design. We can take care of everybody. It's not, we're coming out of a situation of scarcity, realpolitik, whoever's got the gun can conquer and win and be the winner and all that is a, a thing of scarcity. We've got a new ontologic reality at a level of capability and it never seems to be mentioned or brought up on the table that maybe we've made a qualitative transformation and that there is enough. We've transcended scarcity would be a major thing of that and we've got a capability. So if there's enough, do you understand that that's a qualitative <laughs> thing that should be mentioned once in a while and it never is? Among the intellectual classes, they've all been co-opted from systems thinking by being specialized out on grants and tenure and getting money and making money you and all here, the other things. Let's go back to the China study. Right? Okay, yeah. And, and one of the questions that is raised there in the book, why is that knowledge about nutrition not being universally known. Well, we've had and people who have been vegetarian. I, I know. I got to see the book. Issue, I, or right? I'm going to go. Also, you see, Kurzweil. And, and, Kurzweil's got the book out with his guy who says you can live. He's uh, the, the you know they're understanding the telomites or whatever is on the gene that you can live much longer. Uh, yeah, know. Yeah, no, again, helping. I'm trying to say something else. Sorry, and that sorry, is sorry. The sorry. reason why yeah. you, you ask why it's not mm. universally known mm. that we've switched to a completely different possibility, mm -hmm. and yet we are going with the old thing. Yeah. And I'm saying that in, the, in that, I'm taking that as an example. Yeah. That, oh, if you just take nutrition as an example. Yeah, okay, yeah. So we, know, we now today, we have a new uh, model, if you will, right. for a healthy life. <laughs> right. And yet it's not yet a common knowledge. Okay. And if you ask why, yeah. uh, the, 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 one of the uh, speculative perhaps uh, thoughts in that book is yeah. that most of the uh, experts that are called to advise governments uh -huh. about nutrition and so forth are actually uh, on the payroll of the agribusiness. And if not directly on the <laughs> yeah. payroll, they, yeah. they are part of yeah. the existing system. Right, right, right. And those commissions have right. representations from the meatpacking industry right, and right. the industry and so forth. So these are not people who are bad people who are trying to uh, screw up everybody. Right, right. Uh, but they represent a certain way of way of looking things yeah. and they're just acting out what yeah. they know. And what they know how to do. And that's what they a, know how to do well, is irrelevant. A, yeah, so right. we, we keep with the old stuff and so forth. So it's a gigantic educational... Well, it's not, it's, it's, it's not necessarily relevant because some of those things will anchor us to history. Some of it has to be done in a way. Again, I go back to how a new species appears or something. But there has to be a way that is in keeping... Nietzsche said the future influences the present as much as the past. We're reifying the past. It's a traditional thing. But that there's a capability that the, the, that the future requires 
or allows in a new way it's, from systems thinking. Of, of and why doesn't that become more generally understood in the political realm or in the realm of geopolitical thinking and power structure because and power relations? It's very simple again. Look, if you look at the number of graduates every year from all the universities around the world, yeah. All the schools, all yeah, the different disciplines. Yeah. How many of those are systems? Are system thinkers? Very few. Very few. They've d so, they've divided and conquered the intellectual community, so, the bastards who run the and world. So that's the result that you get. Okay. You shouldn't be surprised. So mm. this is why the role of education is so important. Yeah. Uh, both in increasing the capacity to think systemically. Yeah. Right. But also in understanding mm -hmm. the real significance of what's going on. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the media, I mean, mm. everybody is really dealing with sideshows. Don't miss out on on public access brother this is going to be a major source what do you think of, what you. do you think yeah. of the uh, what do you think of the occupy movement that's shaping or trying to be born into this world well i i i, uh, I have little to say about the occupation Just, itself and yeah. so on but obviously what you have there mm. from a bird's eye point of view yeah. is a manifestation of this of some elements of the system trying to say what we're doing is not right, we have to do it differently. And they may not know or anything, but at least I'm glad I lived long, I'm getting older, I'm glad I lived long enough to see this thing crying to be born. There you, you know? go, this And is it's going it. with Prout in this India and all this, this kind it. of stuff. So what we need to do mm. is to try and, uh, it, 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 try and increase the number of effective midwives right. to help it be born. Yeah. And that again means education, means better research about those uh, and yeah, so forth, right. and that's why we established the sustainability lab. Maybe a better diet. Be but for me, uh, I'm going to learn. You'll learn longer, <laughs> and you'll be doing this longer, Listen, and you'll can, be able to can, serve longer. Yes, long. I look forward to a longer life. I thank you for that. But I, 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 what I want to do is, I'm sorry. This is a good talk forever. It's really great talking with you. It's so good to see you again. But your 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 thing you got going in the negative, right? Let's get to that because that's a major thing that you're doing and dealing with a lot of these issues in terms of a, a of a Bedouin people and everything, is that not worth mentioning? And it begins to be taken attention of by other people, and it addresses the question how a civilization might deal with people who are kind of, in a sense, marginal by the historical patterns, by their own culture. That's a huge issue of, this, of relationship between an advanced, for want of a better, in quotes, term, and other peoples of traditional, and that, that's a huge sociological and economically important issue, is it not? Maybe you could address it or Yeah, but I want to take a, a step backwards. We only got about five, 10 minutes. So we'll do it five and five. We'll split okay. five and five. Okay. <laughs> I, the first is to give the context for this. So, Please. Uh, uh, so, some people participate in, in those, how do you call it, the... the, the, the uh, general assembly? No, 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 no the, yeah. the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, those walkouts or whatever. Oh, you mean the Occupy Wall Street? The Occupy you, Wall Street. Well, well they do this have a, gen, a thing called a general this assembly. This is one way to... And they wiggle like this, they got ways of communicating, open mic and all this. This is one way to express the need for change. Yeah. Uh, in my own uh, work, uh, after experience, uh, long experience with uh, economic development projects yeah. around the world yeah. and trying to uh, see how to deal with sustainable development yes. and seeing the huge gap between mm -hmm. working with multilaterals, basically, yeah. uh, institutions like the World Bank and others, mm -hmm. seeing the, the, the huge gap between the rhetoric of development, yeah. sustainable development, and what yeah. was actually happening on the yeah. ground and beginning to understand the limitations of many of those uh, uh, institutions, mm -hmm. why they cannot innovate, why yeah. they cannot break through. Right. Uh, I thought that it would be interesting to start on an adventure of uh, launching and funding the sustainability laboratory. In the negative? Uh, that, or, in sorry. the world. Oh, in the world, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, the sustainability laboratory yeah. that will be an agile, smaller organization uh -huh. that will see its role as developing a, a, a portfolio of showcase breakthrough projects okay. that demonstrate approaches to sustainability. Oh, thank you very so much. So the, uh, yeah. the, the, the first step in that was mm. developing a better definition of sustainability, okay. which we will not be able to get into now, and a set of sustainability principles. What Could does, you do it in a thumbnail way? What do we mean when well, we say I, I it's uh, just an uh, interconnection yeah. of systems? And uh, I, I, I think it has to do fundamentally with a, with a uh, the interaction between populations and carrying capacity of the environment it can be right. any population, any carrying right. it can be amoeba in a petri dish yeah. or, or 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 lions in the savanna or humans on the planet. Or maybe it can just be picked up. So the, the whole essence of it yeah. is how to maintain a certain yeah. dynamic equilibrium in right. the interaction between the two, such right. that the 
population itself can evolve to express mm. its full potential, right. its latent Thank potential, you. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but without, uh, uh, without uh, creating uh, irreversible uh, adverse mm. impacts on the environment on, on, upon which it depends. So it's a circular thing yeah, again, right? right yeah. It would uh, be wonderful to see every human being able to realize their absolutely full potential, would it not? There'd be a synergistic something more resonating. For sure. Like a, okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and from this are related the five uh, principles that relate to the, uh, how to deal with the physical domain, economic, social, and so forth. Yeah. And uh, the project that you're uh, referring to in the negative is an yeah. opportunity to demonstrate, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, the systemic uh, uh, whole view uh -huh. of integrating those five dimensions uh -huh. of the sustainability principles in one uh, instance. So it's a microcosm for the world. It's a small community. What we're trying to do there is work with a group of uh, a Bedouin community yeah. in the desert mm -hmm. and create a model for uh, uh, sustainable agriculture in an arid zone that will fit, will contribute to that community, yeah. will fit the, the southern part of Israel, any yeah. place in that region, or, other or any, areas any like that, arid yeah. region yeah. around the world. Yeah. Uh, and the, the thing will be based on the experience, knowledge, tradition, aspirations of the Bedouin uh, community and the knowledge of the desert, yeah. but really uh, amplified and leveraged tremendously by very advanced technologies, uh, solar, uh, solar energy, uh, the way we treat water, the way we treat the soil, the soil enhancement uh, uh, project and, and, and so on. Do you think the cultures like the Bedouin can survive a world of modern connection to the broader modern world that has all the advantages? Or what happens to the traditional cultures that are very rooted and their identities are wrapped up in, in when it encounters a system with autobahns and everything? Well, it changes. Yeah, uh, inevitably, yeah. it changes. And uh, the, yeah. and the, well, you know, so the answer to your question yeah. is probably not, unless you can isolate mm. A, a civilization uh, in, in, uh, without any... Because there are values that are very intrinsic. So the those, question... The, those, the, you know, like the American Indian people have of great course. traditions. So the, 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 the real question there is mm. how, not how to preserve it, like mm. in a zoo, well, a, 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 all right. but yeah. how yeah. to allow for mm. it to evolve without uh -huh. too much pain. Uh -huh. Because those transitions are very painful. Also, we can learn from those things uh, more absolutely. than we think. There's and so then that switches over into our touch to the ecology, does uh, completely it not? In a, in a metaphor. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, not just metaphorically. This yeah. is real. In, in real, because, uh, yeah, right. Uh -huh. Aboriginal societies like this have uh -huh. lived uh, for hundreds of thousands of years yeah, with, right. the, with a close contact to the world. Right. right. And they were, their way of life was sustainable right. in, that, uh, in that sense. Exactly right. Uh, right. Now, I to answer your question again, I don't think that a nomadic way of life like the Bedouins lived for 100 years uh. is possible in the modern context. Yeah. So they have to integrate into the economy wherever they are. It can that's be Israel, a, that's can be a any. historical process, is it not? Uh, uh, By uh, 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 evolutionary, of people, evolution, right. evolutionary. And so the, the real issue there, how to preserve the best, how yeah. to learn from the best, uh -huh. and integrate it. And preserve the best. And preserve the best. And, 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 and not use. To, it's not to conquer. Not, not, to, not conquer to conquer for sure. Not to conquer or obliterate. Not right. to conquer for There's sure. There's been too much of that. Has there uh, not that been was in the, the colonial, uh, that was that's exactly the colonial, the colonial experience. approach. Yeah. Whoever's got the gun run. Yeah, right. I'm superior. That's These a very are worrying thing. Yeah. Completely. And it's, here... I mean, I know from my own experience, there's so much that I could learn from my Bedouin colleagues. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, it's astounding. I right, mean, it's absolutely. A, it's such a rich uh, and powerful tradition. One of the worst and, things about the whole universe and the world and all of that is there's only a limited amount of time. We've run out of time for this program, Mike. Thank you very so much. So good to talk to you. We could go on talking 25 hours at the drop of a hat. Your pleasure. I have the perceptions of uh, Michael Ben Ali, PhD, a uh, colleague of Mr. Fuller. He's uh, very doing great work and everything, as you can see, on very important, crucial questions of the human condition. We're all looking forward to June 6, where there's going to be a gathering of Buckminster Fuller fans uh, to celebrate the Design Science uh, Awards that are coming. And uh, thank you very, very much for such a very, very well-led life. And thank you very much for coming in. Really good to see you, as always, Michael. A pleasure ben to Ali. be with you. Eh? Okay, thank you for viewing. We'll be coming back again. Uh, tomorrow. We just got started and we have to stop. <laughs> Isn't that a pain in the neck? <laughs> that's true for life itself. Yeah, you know, that's, it a, that's you, a metaphor. It isn't take it? you 90 years to learn <laughs> yes, and then boom.